50,000 years ago. The Systems Alliance Spaten, with elaborate secrecy, Cerberus labored for years to build a new, superior Normandy. The vehicle's many alterations produced a craft nearly double the original size, requiring an even larger Tantalus Drive core to compensate. The new Normandy features greater space in living quarters, research laboratory, observation deck, and cargo bay. Its shuttle can make landings the Normandy cannot attempt. In addition to tight beam communicators, Normandy's Quantum Entanglement Communicator, QEC, provides instantaneous contact with the elusive man. The Enhanced Defense Intelligence, AI, coordinates many of the ship's combat functions, assisting and even supplanting human piloting. Potential upgrades are numerous. The airframe could support additional armor and an axial mass accelerator. The thrusters could support recent advances in fuel technology beyond H2O2 chemical rockets. And the hull can mount double the standard number of kinetic barrier projectors, leaving space for stronger shields, easily sustainable via the new ESO drive core. The Systems Alliance UT-47 drop shuttle landing craft holds 12 soldiers in a cramped, uncomfortable cargo bay and two more in the cockpit. Officially named the Kodiak, the drop shuttle is better known to Alliance Marines as the Combat Cockroach due to its appearance and durability. The vehicle's robust environmental sealant technology exposes few vulnerable parts to the elements. First tested in the sulfuric acid clouds and extreme temperatures of Venus, the Kodiak can land in hard vacuum, high pressure, and temperatures from near absolute zero to over 900 degrees Celsius. A true contragravitic vehicle, the Kodiak's substantial element zero core allows flight by entirely countering the vehicle's mass. Its small thrusters are for directional control only. So if the mass effect field fails, the vehicle becomes a proverbial three million credit coffin. The unarmed shuttle forgoes weaponry space for active masking, electronic countermeasures, and a robust kinetic barrier system, ideal for dropping troops undetected. In the early 21s, although they resemble a mammal-reptile cross, the Vorcha have no terrestrial analog. They are humanoid in form, but Vorcha have clusters of non-differentiated neoblast cells, like those of Earth's planarian worms. Damaged Vorcha cells mature into specialized structures to alleviate injury or stress. Transformations include thicker skin following injury, lung adaptation for barely breathable atmospheres, and stronger cardioskeletal muscle under high gravity. Skull capacity and brain size do not change, and Vorcha rarely make more than one somatic overhaul. Vorcha assault each other frequently, causing their young to gain strength, intelligence, and resilience. As a result, Vorcha see inflicting and receiving pain as normal communication. Few Vorcha study professions, in part because their average life expectancy is only 20 years. Because Vorcha can eat and breathe nearly anything, they can live almost anywhere. But racism prevents them from integrating into most societies that dismiss them as vermin. They have few employment options beyond Krogan mercenary bands. In the early 2160s, Living beyond the Omega-4 mass relay in the Terminus systems, the mysterious collector species is glimpsed so rarely as to be taken for a myth by most in galactic society. In reality, 
Collectors are human-sized insectoid bipeds and can resemble massive winged beetles. They are a terrifying force in the galaxy, responsible for the murder of hundreds of thousands. Collectors generate permanent stasis fields around themselves, creating nightmarish red-shifted energy fields. In battle, they hold position whenever possible, relying on their aggressive biotics and nearly limitless power. Several types of bipedal collectors have been identified, including minions, defenders, zealots, assassins, and artillery operators. Acting together, collectors have imprisoned entire cities in stasis. While no definite forensic accounting exists to explain the fate of those imprisoned, leading speculation is that victims are harvested for scientific experimentation and neurobiological repurposing. Immediately following, the reclusive tycoon calling himself the elusive man is a human nationalist focused on advancing human interests, whatever the cost to non-humans. The Citadel Council regards him as a fanatic, posing a serious threat to galactic security. A mysterious maverick, to say the least, the elusive man heads the Cerberus network. Dubbed the Elusive Empire by investigators, Cerberus is an allegedly untraceable syndicate of private intelligence agencies, biotics laboratories, engineering and scientific research teams, and lucrative front companies. Branded a terrorist and seditionist organization by authorities, Cerberus is the only human power base other than the Terra Firma party, strong enough to embarrass, if not threaten, the Council and its human representatives. brainchild of Asari Commando Jonas Sedaris, Eclipse was incorporated as a proactive security company. Influenced by Asari and Salarian military doctrine, Eclipse specializes in sabotage, assassination, and personal and organizational security. Although Citadel governments regard the corporation with suspicion, it's embraced in the Skillian Verge and Terminus systems. Early on, Sedaris sought government contracts to establish market share against the better established Blue Suns. Her agency scored a galactic PR coup by retaking several space stations captured by the Anher People's Liberation Army and neutralizing its leaders. A victory Eclipse's marketing department never ceases trumpeting. Based on Omega Station, Eclipse controls nearly 20% of the asteroid's real estate. Its services range from mech repair to open warfare. Though assassination is reserved for meeting wider, longer-term company goals. For instance, preemptive strikes against pirates rather than murdering spouses for insurance money. Despite numerous reports, Eclipse denies sabotaging or kidnapping business rivals. Originally a small Terminus Systems Vorcha gang, the Blood Pack was transformed into a legion by visionary Krogan battlemaster Gunnar Rang. Exiled for striking a female in anger, Rang obsessed over reclaiming his lost status. Leading the Vorcha Pack as a pirate crew, Rang cultivated recruits and infamy for a decade before incorporating his fighters as a security company across the Skillian Verge. His notoriety ensured his initial public offering for investors made him rich beyond most Krogan's dreams. Rang returned triumphantly to his clan, rallying elders, Krogan hordes, and their firepower and biotic support toward professional violence in the Terminus systems. Banned from Citadel space, the Blood Pack bribes its way through spaceports into armed conflicts across the galaxy. Priding themselves for accepting otherwise untouchable contracts, the Blood Pack rejects bodyguarding and security in favor of cases requiring minimal oversight and maximal violence. Founded by notorious Batarian slaver Solom Dalsera, the Blue Suns began as a Skillian Verge protection racket, providing genuine protection from slavers and pirates. Eventually captured by the Systems Alliance Navy, Dalsera beat almost two dozen charges to be convicted on a single count of conspiracy. The slaver benefited from the tutelage of cellmate and brilliant con artist Bernard Legit's Ledger. Upon release five years later, the 
Sarah incorporated Blue Suns as a legal security agency. Today, the Blue Suns boast a galaxy-wide force of Batarians, Turians, Humans, and Krogan. Each deployment is backed by a logistics core, selling everything from heavy weapons to shaving cream. Despite claims that Blue Suns sells its captives as slaves, no Blue Suns employee has ever been convicted on such charges. Many Blue Suns members sport the company logo in tattoo form, removed during assignments and reapplied at mission end. Originally an Freedom's Progress Colony, originally an asteroid rich in element zero, Omega was briefly mined by the Protheans, who eventually abandoned it due to its thick, impenetrable crust. Thousands of years later, nature did what even the Protheans could not. A collision with another asteroid broke Omega in half, exposing its trove of element zero for easy mining. A rush ensued as corporations and private individuals tried to strike it rich on Omega, and thieves and outlaws followed in their wake. As space became tight, construction of processing facilities extended vertically from the asteroid, creating Omega's jellyfish-like silhouette. To prevent future collisions, the station is ringed with enormous mass effect field generators that redirect incoming debris. Today, Omega is a major hub of narcotics, weapons, and EZO trafficking, without even a pretense of civilian government or military control. Only mercenary groups have been able to instill a limited order. The most ruthless is an Asari syndicate run by the notorious Arya Talok. Freedom's Progress Colony was once a typical Alliance settlement, but following complete communications blackout, and its apparent destruction is now a lightning rod for anxiety and dread in the galactic human community. The communications blackout followed an upgrade of the colony's small military force, supplemented by mechs and security drones, with high-powered tower-mounted guardian lasers. Colonists complained about construction cost overruns, delays, noise, and damage to the local environment. They also feared the defense array could be seen as provocative to their world's neighbors. Such fears may not have been baseless. Authorities have still offered no explanation for the communications blackout, fueling rumors of plagues, natural disasters, or a cult-inspired mass suicide. Located in strategically insignificant space, Freedom's Progress Colony had once offered residents spectacular rainbows, lush marshlands, and stunning mountain ranges. Its potential as an agricultural settlement and tourism wonderland rivaled that of any Alliance colony. A political economic pact for collective colonial security, the Alliance is the central galactic institution of human society. The Alliance gained associate membership to the Citadel Council in 2165 and full membership in 2183 with Ambassador Donald Udina representing humanity. Human political economic relationships vary between combative and lucrative. The Turians who fought humans during the 2157 First Contact War have become valuable trade partners despite residual social hostility. Other relationships are even more complicated. The rapid rise of human political influence on the Council, achieving in decades what others waited or are still waiting centuries to acquire, has galvanized suspicion and resentment against humanity. That negativity is vastly outweighed by the respect and trust humanity earned by saving the Council during the 2183 attack on the Citadel, at the cost of Alliance cruisers Cairo, Cape Town, Emden, Jakarta, Madrid, Seoul, Shenyang, and Warsaw, and their 2400 crews. 